man. I'd love to see that. I could use a pick-me-up. Is that, is that Kishan? I can't promise it'll be there. Still, though. A hallway that's only there sometimes? How do you get the kitchen otherwise? There's another, slightly longer one that we use instead. It's much less exciting, but on the upside, it's consistently there. I love telling new people about it, though. The reaction's always hilarious. I definitely didn't expect to be getting enthusiastic today over a weird quantum hallway. Quantum. When people start getting nervous about magic, they usually start trying to explain it using science terms to reassure themselves. We're enthusiastic at all, actually, because as soon as I stop to think about it, I realize I'm actually extremely messed up about this. I understand. Your life has gotten really weird really fast, conceptually speaking. Or, uh, your unlife? I should be better at talking about this by now, shouldn't I? Uh, geez, that's not a fun one to think about, huh? Just keep talking about the hallway so I can keep my mind off this. To be honest, I'm not sure I could even properly explain a lot of what goes on in here. The building's mildly sentient. Too much magic in the soil for it not to be, really. So the cafe's... alive? Okay. Let's stop and talk about our, our lovely Necrobarista for a moment. Right now, we are looking at one of the most wicked interesting pair of sneaker attachments I think I could see which is an extension that goes up the leg and wraps around it like an anklet red with white totally cool and and cool and stuff like that but are those like tiny fishnet stockings along with it damn girl gives a care about the small details am I right just saying just saying not necessarily. Also, can we talk about how her shoes coordinate with her glasses? Just saying. Okay. Plenty of things have come to life here, but as far as we can tell, the building itself doesn't really fall into that category. Also, it mostly tends to shift itself in ways that are helpful instead of frustrating, so... Quantum hallways. Oh, I'm making myself a cuppa. Cuppa. Australian vernacular for cup of tea. An important cultural institution, especially when drunk in the afternoon. You want something? No, I'm good for now. Uh, also, what's uh, the what's the barista's name? Uh, I didn't actually catch it. I feel like a jerk. Ah, uh, Maddie. She's the new owner now. Not just the barista. Still makes coffee, of course. But since she's the owner now, she has a lot more to juggle. Why are you asking? Got her eye on got your eye on her, huh? No, uh I have a boyfriend. Oh. Ha had. Jeez. This is a lot. Can't imagine how he's feeling. Try not to think about it. I uh, Okay. Yep. Okay. You want that drink now? Uh, I think I want something a little more potent than coffee right now. Sorry. Don't enable him, Keyshawn. Shush. I can get you something stronger, mate. Would you like bourbon? Bourbon. A neat bourbon will always be the perfect mix of classy, yet unpretentious. Is Or is that too weak? I... Uh, I thought this was a cat. Hey. Well, it is. Mostly. Uh, we do serve alcohol, though. All right. Personal executive decision. I will be trying out new voices for some of these characters to separate them. Don't mind me. The accents will be horrible. Go on. Uh, we do serve... <clears throat> we do serve alcohol, though. And stronger things on request. Uh, stronger? Like what? Iguoto? Absinthe? Pure ethanol? 
Uh, you think a place like this wouldn't have anything stronger than that? Stronger than pure ethanol? Sure. Remind me later and I might pull out... Oh, sure. Remind me later and I might pull out some of my special reserve. Don't enable them, Keyshawn. Hey. Hey, someone's got to drink it. I know you're not going to touch the stuff aside from setting it on fire. I have perfectly good reasons for wanting to set a puddle of distilled soul on fire. Huh. We'll agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> so, Kishan, what'll it be? Uh, actually, I, I changed my mind on the coffee. Can I order something complex? Gotta treat myself on my last day of Earth. I'm after a sugar rush. Ha, huh, if we have the ingredients, shouldn't be an issue. Maddie can whip it up for you. Cool, cool. Hey, Shenny, it's wonderful to see you. In that case, can I have a large quadruple shot, double vanilla caramel, no foam, super hot, reverse coconut milk macchiato? Oh. My. God. With two sugars and whipped cream on top? Uh, Maddie? Yes, dearest? Can you, uh, I don't quite know how. Is this real? <sighs> oh, is it too much? I was gonna ask for a splash of bourbon in it, but that seemed a little extra. Well, yes, it is too much. It is a bad order, and I hate it. Uh, how bad? Uh, worst one you ever seen? No. I just hate it. Oh, dang. Every single word of that increased my urge to set an espresso machine on fire so I wouldn't have to think about making coffee ever again. Urge. Maddie has all the classic symptoms of being a pyromaniac, but she's definitely not a pyromaniac. Except the bourbon bit. I can put that in my coffee, too. So, with all that in mind, I have a counter offer. Oh, uh, yeah? I'll make you another double shot long black and I'll put Bermit in it, but I won't call you a hipster this time. Hmm. If you decline my offer, I will strip your soul of your body and use it to scrub the counters at closing time. They'll smell delicious afterwards, if that's any consolation. Oh, uh, yikes. That does sound like a competitive counter offer. Not the soul thing. I'll take the coffee. My generosity knows no bounds. Normie. So in conclusion, that order sucked because it's inordinately complex to make, has a heart attack worth of sugar in it, and is something that only impatient jerks ask for. Is it possible to die twice? Yep. You can die twice if you're brought back from the dead. Or if you... Or if you manage to really annoy someone in between here and the next place. Which is more likely, because... Resurrection is illegal. Resurrection. Resurrection is reserved for emergencies, and the council has very particular definitions about what it constitutes an emergency. Many centuries pass without a single qualified emergency. But if you're asking whether you can get a heart attack or whatever, the answer is no. Life and death have a slightly different meaning here. Can't die from natural causes. It's a bit complex and weird, and we're still in the process of figuring out how it all works. I'm over 200 years old, and I still haven't made proper sense of it yet. Just got some vague ideas. Right. So what's keeping me from just staying here? Like, I'm already dead. Why do I have to go to the next place? You've got a certain number of hours you're allowed to remain on the edge of the mortal realm. Hours are... fungible. Fungible? They can be bought, sold, and exchanged. Generally speaking. But the Council of Death always collects on debts owed to them. And you start running up a debt if you stay here too long. Your soul starts to get itchy, too. 
itchy. Is there any feeling less pleasant than an itch you can't scratch? Probably, but it's still up there. It's not something you want to experience. I've had a few stay past the dot a lot of time. They've gotten very uncomfortable real fast. Starts with general irritability, then worse things begin to happen. Uh huh. It's a weird thing to wrap your head around. How long do I have before I need to make myself scarce? You get 24 hours. Any longer and we start to pick up the tab, since you're on our premises. Tab. The terminal is a place where borrowed time has very literal meaning. And as charming as you are, we've already racked up too much time debt from letting people stick around past their expiry date. And... Cash and cash wise, we're very poor. We've been a little bit too lenient in the past. Letting people stay just a little longer instead of gently shooing them into the next plane of existence, etc. You know the drill. But hey, since hours are fungible, you can always acquire them some other way. There's something happening tonight, actually, that you might be interested in. Seriously? You're still doing that? Shush. No, the console doesn't look at that stuff favorably. Ned said so himself. Draws customers and helps us shave down the debt. I'll take whatever I can get. And hey, fuck Ned. We have a 13-year-old right here, you know. Uh, she's heard enough coarse language for a lifetime. I'm not too worried about her. She's right, though. What? Every time Ned comes around, he makes you guys really stressed out. Stressed. Ashley's at that age where she's learned to recognize when other people are stressed, but not experienced enough to fully understand what it feels like. Um, maybe not you so much. But Maddie gets nervous and it brings down the mood, man. So fuck Ned. Uh, I think you had too much coffee today, young lady. Oh, I'm scratching so hard right now, you have no idea. It's like crashing earlier, but I was a pre-crash, and now I have to double crash or something, like, yeah. <sighs> All I ask is that you try and keep the swing to a minimum when the customers are around. Okay. Does Keyshawn count? It's fine. A couple of my housemates are tradies, so you'll end to ignore it pretty quick. Housemates, a great way to save money on rent and never get lonely, if you're not attached to the idea of personal space. Our tradies were, were tradies. Uh, they're still tradies, unless they change careers in the last couple days, but they're not my roommates anymore, because, uh, they made, have I mentioned how much being dead sucks? Because it sucks, and I feel extremely bad about it. Having a pretty bad time right now in general, to be honest. Yep. Even just adapting your language is a pain, isn't it? Want a proper drink now? Without coffee in it? Yeah. That'd be good. Oh, the DV didn't say anything about there being a storm tonight. Storm. You never know when a Melbourne storm is going to catch you off guard and steal your rugby ball. Huh? Looks like a decent sized one's rolling in. Melbourne weather strikes again. I'll go upstairs and close the windows. Cheers. Come on, Ashley. Time to clean up your workbench while we're up there, yeah? Uh-huh. Do you need a bribe? Yes. I have some chocolate hidden away. Acceptable. Wait. Dead people can still get drunk, yeah? Why else do you think we serve alcohol? To make money? Oh, yeah. Hang on. Do I even have my wallet? Doubt it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. How does that work? Why do I have my clothes, but not the contents of my pockets? Pockets. Good place for things that don't have a place. Chewing gum, spare change, nervous hands. 
I don't know, dude. Everyone's different. Experience is different. Death doesn't follow many rules. Only universal rule I can think of is that you can't stay. People don't generally come in without their clothes, fortunately. One moment, actually. I gotta alt-tab something. Hmm. So... About this drink... I guess you're gonna give me straight vodka or something? Uh, why's that? Uh, you don't like making complex drinks. <laughs> Dude. No. I don't like making ridiculous caffeine laced milkshakes for overcompensated do soccer dags. I'm happy to mix a cocktail, within reason. Oh, okay. What do you got then? Chase got everything you can think of. And then some. I could go for a mint julep. Hey. What's that outside? Outside? Some guy out in the rain? Ah, oh, shit. Maddie? What's up? Let's get started on that drink. Morning. Uh, hi. Hello, recently departed. Hey, uh, that hat you're wearing kind of makes you look like, uh, Ned Kelly. Could have sworn you were standing outside literally a second ago. So, how'd he die? Good morning to you too, Ned. It's five o'clock in the afternoon, Madeline. Piss off, Ned. That's not even my full name. Isn't it, Maddie? Chase said it was, and he never lies. He never said that. Well, no. It was worth a try. A try at what? Catching me off balance? Some shit along those lines? Mate, I'm so off balance right now, a light breeze would knock my me head over arse. Don't push me. Hey, uh, this mint julep is great. Just wanted to contribute that to the conversation. So, you catch the game last night? Game. The Australian Football League provides everyone with a chance to root for their favorite local team, except Tasmanians. Yes, I know that Carlton beat Collinwood again. I don't care. Oof. Just making polite conversation. You should try it sometime. Maybe. Not for you, though. You've never come in during daylight hours before. What do you want? Nothing much. I'd like to talk to Che at some point, but it can wait, seeing as he's... Missing? Planning on sending it out a search party? Might do. It'd be a shame to lose an old friend by letting him wander onto some train tracks or something. Yeah, well, shut up. He's upstairs last I saw. What was the last you saw, Maddie? Tell me. Why are you like this? What was it? Last saw him walking upstairs. So he could be anywhere then. Probably fled the country to dodge the massive time bet you lot are racking up. Fled. Some obligations have a way of following you, no matter where you run to. He can't go far. I've got him on a pretty tight leash. In regards to the debt... <laughs> it's not your problem. Uh, you must not have heard. Not your problem. Che, your dickhead friend Ned is here. Oi, I'm a distinguished gent, not a dickhead. I'll be, I'll be down in a sec. Sure, yeah, but you also work for the Council of Death. 
So even if you are a distinguished gent, it cancels out. Uh, is the Council of Death like a normal city council? Except for where wherever dead people live? Yeah, but the only trash that needs to be collected right is right in front of me. This guy? Me? No. You. You're the trash, Ned. No, you're. You. You're the trash, Ned. The trash is you. It's you. Ned, the trash man from hell. Because council, pick up trash. That's the joke. Oh, uh, cool. He's even got a head shaped like a rubbish bin. It's totally fitting. Oh, I'm not from hell. I don't care. And to be clear, Ned, in case you weren't, we weren't already, you are the trash. Yeah, I get it. You know how long Che's gonna be? Don't know. He was busy upstairs with Ashley. <clears throat> yeah, I had that hide like five steak knives from her. Didn't even know he had five steak knives. Bit quiet there, mate. How long you been sitting there? Doesn't matter. Well, your employee's being very rude to me. So if you heard any of that, I keep trying to tell him. Ah, my employee. Yes, I have some catching up to do. I don't follow. Did she quit? Quit. Maddie's not one to back down from a challenge, but if she did, she wouldn't be the first. Did you fire her for gross incompetence? Huh. Far from it. There's been a bit of a shakeup at the cafe's management structure since you last visited. Oh no. Don't tell me you gave her the whole thing. Okay. I won't tell you. I tried to tell you before, Matt. I tried to tell you before, man. Hey, uh, does anyone else like mint juleps? Because this is great, and I'm nearly done, and my tongue is numb, and I'm wondering what the deal is with that. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I need a drink before we go through all that. Sure. The usual? Yes, please. How come he gets a... How come he gets a curly straw? So, Jay, spin me a tale of how and why you handed down the cafe to, uh, this person. Well, every man's got his price. Can my price be a curly straw too? Buddy, I'll give you two if it means you'll stop complaining about dumb, numb lips. Uh, yeah, what did you make this with? Couldn't find half the ingredients, so we put in a bunch of arigato and um, chili seeds. It's got the stuff, some of the stuff though, so it's a mint julep in spirit, if nothing else. Does this have any mint or julep in it at all? Uh, definitely may lacking mint, and I can't confirm nor deny the existence of the mythical julep. Mythical. To some people, this place seems otherworldly. For others, this is just the world they live in. You asked for Ergoto earlier, so there you go. Mission complete. Maddie, you're getting very drunk very fast. Ergoto does that to you. Here, I think you should have a little lie down. I'll get you some water. I'm as strong as an ox. I don't need a lie down. Kishan, my dude, you absolutely need to get horizontal as soon as possible. You can sober up in one of the booths up back. It's nice and quiet over there. <laughs> I'll fight you. No, you won't. You get up, mate. Bloody hell. It would have been helpful if you told me about this before. Hmm, probably. Not too worried about it. Maddie knew she was, she was getting owned to with this whole cafe situation. And it's natural that it might take a while for her to get the hang of around in a business. Bloody hell bit of a dog's dinner though, isn't it? Dog's dinner. 
Sometimes you have a kitchen mishap that results in a food only fit for a dog's dinner. Some dogs resent the implication that they're deserving of lesser food, but most of them eagerly lap it up. Oh, sure. But it would get better. Uh, like I said, I'm not worried about it. Well, uh, you might want to hold your judgment for that on a moment. I am, unfortunately, here on official business. Oh. Shouldn't have given you the straw, then. No, you shouldn't have. Looks quite silly. Want me to get rid of it? It's just Maddie. She won't use it to derail our conversation or make me look like a fool or anything like that. Straw? No, I'll get you one after you have a nap. You can sip the water like a normal person. I'll put it with the dirty dishes. I'll put it with the dirty dishes, then. The sacrifices I make for this job. Hey, you met me through it. So I can't have been all the that. That was bloody a hundred years ago. Man, really? Longer. Time flies when you're immortal, huh? Quasi-immortal. This old rust bucket's still got an expiration... expiry date somewhere down the line. Expiry? Time comes for us all? Uh, what's this about immortality? Hey, you should buy more plants. Shut up. Sorry, continue. Immortality. Oh, nothing that I trust you with, that's for sure. Aw, oh, don't you want to see crotchy old me be rude to youngsters in a hundred years? Truly, I do not. The far future doesn't need amateur necromancers. Amateur. Amateur can describe someone who's not good enough to turn pro. But it also means someone who's passionately engages in something just for the pure love of it. Your loss. So, you two heading upstairs? Uh, actually, uh, Ned does in fact have something fairly important to discuss with you. Oh. It's about the debt you owe to the council. Yeah, I know. What about it? Maddie, it's time. You owe us over 600 hours. Chase signed a contract. The hours are the cafe. You own the cafe, so you own the debt. And tonight, I've come to collect. That was kind of intense. Do they do that often? The song and dance thing? Yeah, what they think they are, some sort of anime street gang? Returning subscriber. <laughs> hey, Mecca. 
thank you for the support and the subscription for Tier 3. It was an interesting thing. Welcome, friend. I was wondering where you were. Yeah, what do they think they are? Some sort of anime street gang? What sort of self-obsessed jerk has their own theme song? Don't be a downer, pal. No, I was talking about the dramatic encounter. Oh, between Maddie and Ned. Yes. Yeah, they got chemistry. Not the romantic kind, the explosive kind. Can't leave them in the same room together or they'll kill each other. Bad history. Maddie's just a seriously troublesome person from Ned's perspective. Doesn't help that she can't stop herself from pulling pranks on him. No, I suppose not. I mean, he does make it easy either. I don't think he's used to having his authority questioned. She really gets under his skin. Wasn't he a famous criminal? And therein lies the irony of the situation. What a strange world we live in. 